Here we are going to simplify a couple of expressions, and we'll use the properties of exponents. So notice on this first one we have 2x squared, all raised to the third power, times x times y. This exponent of 3 is on the outside of the parentheses, so this will apply to each of the factors inside, whereas this exponent of 2 just applies to the base that it is immediately adjacent to, just to the x. So if we rewrite this, we would have 2 to the third power times x squared to the third power times x times y. And these little dots, of course, being multiplication. You can put them in or you don't need them when you're dealing with, uh, with these variables. But I'll put them in just to sh show that we're multiplying here. So 2 to the third, that is 8. And x squared raised to the third power. When you have a base and its exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply these, ba these exponents. So 2 times 3 is 6. So now we have x to the sixth, without the parentheses, times still x times y. This x has an exponent of 1. Whenever anything does not have an exponent, you can think of it as having an exponent of 1. It's implied there. So when we multiply like bases, we're going to add these exponents. The 6 and the 1 will get added. So let's rewrite that now as 8 times x to the 7th times y. Now we have 8 x to the seventh y is our final answer there. Okay, on to the next one. 6x to the fourth over 18x to the negative one, all raised to the negative two. Okay, there's a few things going on here, but we just take it step by step. And first, 6 over 18. Well, we can simplify that. 6 over 18 is 1 over 3. We can divide out a 6 out of both the numerator and the denominator. x to the fourth We'll just leave that in the numerator. There's nothing of interest there yet. This x to the negative 1. When you see a negative exponent, I like to think of it as it's unhappy wherever it is. So if a negative exponent shows up in the denominator, put it up in the numerator and make it happy with a positive exponent. Likewise, if it's in, a po if it's in the numerator to begin with, put it in the denominator with, with a uh, positive exponent. But in this case, it's in the numerator, so we'll move that up this way and make it x to the positive 1. This is all still raised to the negative 2. Now this 1 times, 1 times anything is just that anything, so I won't write that again. We'll play this trick again. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. So we'll add the 4 and the 1. So now we have x to the fifth over 3 all raised to the negative 2. Now when we have an entire fraction raised to a negative exponent, you can just flip that fraction upside down and make it a positive exponent. So let's do that. We have 3 over x to the fifth now raised to the positive 2. And now we can apply that exponent of 2 to each of the numerator and the denominator. And if you had more than one factor in, in the numerator or more than one factor in the denominator, you'd play this trick like we did over here. It's, I shouldn't call it a trick. It's, it's the properties of exponents, and it works every time. That's the nice thing about math. So let's rewrite this as 3 squared. I'll write it over here. 3 squared over x to the fifth squared. And now we can continue to simplify. And this 3 squared becomes 9. And just as we did in the last problem, if you have a base and its exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply the, these exponents. So in the end, we have x to the 10th. That's 5 times 2, x to the 10th in the denominator. So our final answer with this expression is 9 over x to the 10th.